Good afternoon, YouTube. My name is Brandon. Welcome to today's episode. It should be a lot of fun. We are going to stick well with some cast iron. Stick around. How's it going, guys? A couple years ago, when I was first starting YouTube, I did a video that became quite popular. You can see it playing here over my shoulder. And that video was about MIG welding cast iron. Well, a lot of you guys commented to try out a product called Muggy Weld. Well, Two years later, I'm still getting the same comments. I've reached out to Muggy Weld to try some of their products. Let's get into it. Welding cast iron really isn't that difficult as long as you follow some basic steps. Now, what makes welding cast iron different than welding, say, mild steel? There's really only one big difference and that is the carbon content of the cast iron. Now, simply put, high carbon content, which is what cast iron has, makes it strong, makes it durable, but it also makes it brittle it'll break before it bends. Now, steel or mild steel has a lower carbon content, therefore it will bend uh, before it breaks. Cast iron won't. So, you know, if you want to weld on a piece of mild steel, you don't really have to do anything. You can get it cherry red, hot as you want to get it, uh, and just let it cool down and things will be fine. You heat up cast iron extremely quick, and then you cool it quick, and it's gonna crack. So here's our simulated piece that we're gonna fix. This is an exhaust manifold, don't know what it came off from. I got it out of the scrap yard. And because it's in uh, non-cracked shape, we're gonna simulate that it has a crack right here. And I'm gonna show you everything that we need to do to get this thing prepped up so that we can weld it and get it back in service. The key here is to get everything prepped up nice and clean. I'm going to work until I get this down to bright, shiny metal. That's going to give us the best chance that we can get for having a nice, solid weld. So I'm going over this with a 40-grit abrasive wheel, doing the best I can to get it to bright, shiny metal. All right, guys, one of the ways to determine if what you're working on, if it's cast iron or cast steel, is to do what's called a spark test. This is going to be an excellent example of what the sparks look like on cast iron. So watch the sparks, sparks as I grind this, then I'm gonna grind my metal bench and watch the difference. You'll notice the sparks from the cast iron are a orangey red color, and the ones from the steel are a yellowy color. Much more sparks from the steel than there is from the cast iron. Now that we have our damaged area ground back, we can really see the edges of where our crack begins and where it ends. That's what the grinding part's going to do, and it's going to get it ready to, to weld. This next step is very important. You have to drill it. You got to drill at the end of the crack. You got to do that on both sides. That's going to prevent the crack from reoccurring after you weld it. Now to drill this, I'm just using a 3 16 drill bit, nothing fancy, I've just got it in a hand drill. And all you need to make sure of is that you have the hole drilled at the end of the crack. Now that we have this drilled out, the crack will not continue beyond our drilled holes. It, it's confined within this space right here. So now we gotta prep the crack itself, get this ready to go. So for this, I'm using the Lennox Metal Max disc. It's a diamond tipped uh, blade. I really like it. I know some people uh, have their mixed reviews. They claim that it's hard to use. I don't. I haven't had those problems. I love it, and the wear just seems to last forever. So we got it all prepped. Now I got two sets of rods here, guys. I got what uh, Muggy Weld calls a 72 cast iron weld and a 77. I'm going to talk briefly about each in pretty general terms. Now the 72 cast iron rod. It's a nickel iron rod and it's primarily used to join dirty and contaminated cast iron. Something that is um, really dirty, an exhaust manifold, uh, could be considered a fairly dirty part. Something maybe that's submersed in, uh, in an oil or something along those lines. The 77, it has a tri-metal core. Now, this stuff has some neat properties because it stretches and elongates uh, in their brochure up to 300% more than comparable other products. So this is kind of what's giving you resistance to cracking right here is this rod. This 77 rod is also machinable. So let's get started. We'll talk about the techniques after we get the welder going. So for this we're going to use the Blue Demon 160 just because I love the arc on this thing. 
These are 330 seconds rods and it recommends 50 to 80 amps. Uh, I'm probably going to go right around 60 with this machine. Uh, I think that's probably probably where it's going to want to be. And it gives a little bit of information on stringer or moderate weave technique. And both of these rods, the 72 and the 77, are an all position rod. Meaning that if you left the part on wherever it is and it's overhead, vertical, uh, whatever, either way, flat, horizontal, it's going to work. It's all position, so you're good there. And they recommend that you do one inch beads. So I'm going to do a little bit, let it completely cool. I'm going to start on the other end, do a little, let it completely cool, come back, let it completely cool until I have the whole thing filled in with this rod. But I'm not going to do any more than uh, an inch at a time. And we're going to peen it, meaning we're going to hit the weld immediately after we're done while it's cooling. And that is going to relieve stress in the weld. So we're going to be welding this with no preheat and with no preheat this what makes welding cast iron probably the most difficult because the cast iron has to go through such an extreme uh, temperature swing. It's going from room temperature to welding temperature very quickly. You have a tendency to increase your odds of success without it cracking if you're able to heat the part you know say get it around 500 degrees or so because your part has less of a swing to go it's going from then you know 500 or so to welding temperature and then you're just going to allow it to cool down real slow so for these I'm not doing anything more than a one inch long bead uh, using this rod I'm just going nice and slow keeping the heat as low as I can get it and that's the key to success with welding cast iron all right guys, I want to bring you in and show you. I'm getting a little bit of undercut and let me show you what that is. And that means my uh, settings are just a little too high. See there's like a little ridge right here. Not much of one, but you can feel just a slight ridge right in here. That's saying my settings are just a little too hot. I think I need to back it down just a little bit. Like at the beginning where the weld's the cool coolest that is like perfect but as I continue the weld is getting a little bit hotter towards the end of my weld and uh, it's just a little too hot so I need to just back my settings down a little bit so that'll give you a good guide uh, to tell if your settings are a little too hot but so far so good this is coming out perfect and as you guys remember I said I th thought this welder runs a little hot uh, or it may just run just right, but uh, we're going to go right to the low side of it. So we're going to run it at 50. So here's a little tip for you guys. Now you can see this is a restrike, and I had to hit it a few times to get it to go. One way to get this so it's super easy and it'll start pretty much first time every time is to have just a little metal file sitting next to you. And just before you go to use the rod, run the tip of the rod over that metal file as you kind of like spin it with your fingers. Kind of like the, the action if you were to sharpen a pencil. That's what you're doing kind of with the electrode. And what that'll do is that'll get that flux uh, back enough so that the wire in the electrode uh, is actually exposed and you will start that rod up the first time every time and it'll make your life a lot easier. And there it is all finished guys. I put a uh, marker line on each side just so you guys could see what, uh, where it began and where it ended. But I mean that is, that's like a perfect weld. Now, to give you an idea, this is three and a half inches long of a crack that we repaired and we used about half a welding rod to do it. So they go a long ways. So if you're trying to figure out what you need to fix what, what it is you're fixing, three and a half inches of crack in this exhaust manifold used about a half a welding rod. And this is 330 seconds that I'm using. So now that we've got this rooted in really good with that 72 rod, and now we're gonna cap it with the 77. Now again, the 77 rod, has that real good elongation and stretch capability, which is what you're gonna get with, you know, heat hot and cold, hot and cold with an exhaust manifold. You know, it gets cold, especially if you're in the Northeast, you're gonna have a cold winter, the exhaust manifold is gonna be cold, then you're gonna start up your car, it's gonna get hot, uh, that metal is gonna expand and contract, and you're gonna want a metal that has the ability 
to expand and contract without cracking and that's what that 77 rod is going to do. Let's get this thing capped and see how it looks when it's done. So here's what I learned from using this rod. If you have a super filthy dirty part, start out with a 72. It's a little less forgiving and I feel like a preheat would optimize that rod. The 77 rod, it didn't even give any indicators that it was going to crack whatsoever. So uh, this right here, I'd probably just weld it up with a 77. Don't necessarily have to worry too much about a preheat. Go low and slow and you'll be good to go. If you wanted to do a preheat, it's just going to increase your odds for success. And look at that guys, that is finished. You can't even tell where we repaired that. I just used an abrasive wheel and a flap disc real quick. And uh, yeah, that is, that's a repair. Completely hidden. If you, uh, you know, if this was an old antique part and you sandblasted this whole thing and then painted it with, you know, uh, like a cast iron gray paint or anything, you'd never even know that that repair was there. I mean, the repair literally blends in perfectly to the surrounding metal. And that's all there is to it guys. Welding cast iron really isn't that difficult. Now another thing you could do is you could heat this up with a uh, propane torch, you know, slowly heat it up, get it heated up to speed. Basically everything that I did in that MIG welding video, you could do that as preheat and post heat. So in other words, heat up the part prior to welding it, then welding it just as I did in this video and then when you're done welding it putting it in some sand and letting the part cool down slowly that's another way of doing it but other than that it's really very simple and we didn't use any preheat so basic tools if you guys have a stick welder this could be AC or a DC welder and minimal tools you're set up all you need is the welding rods to do it and maybe you decided that you don't want to stick weld it that you want to TIG weld it same exact rods throw them in a bucket of water the coating will come off within a few minutes and then you use the rods I know it sounds crazy that's what they say now I will put a link down below for any of the tools if you guys are wondering what I'm using and I'll also put a link uh, to those welding rods so you guys can check those out. If you want to find out what I'm doing before it even makes it up to YouTube you can catch me on Instagram and on Facebook. Links are down below. Have a good day guys. Thanks for watching. Till next week. See ya.